Hey guys, welcome back to another 3D printing video. And in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Cetus MK3. So this is a smaller 3D printer. I'm pretty excited to take a look at it. So in this video, we're gonna unbox it, set it up and do some prints. All right, so let's get started. All right, guys, so the Cetus MK3 comes in this box and it's, you know, quite a small box, not very large. It's got some weight to it. It does have two bands here to keep it intact. So not too much information here. Let's go ahead and open it up and see what's inside. So let's go ahead and cut these bands. Really thick box. All right, and this is what we see on top. So it looks like we have a manual here quick start guide and it is in multiple languages pretty cool so i'm gonna go ahead and take the parts out one by one and uh, we'll see what we have here so it looks like we have a ptfe tubing some kind of bracket with some bolts a us power plug cord a usb interconnecting cable to connect to the printer looks like we have a sample of pla up fila 3d filament very nice and actually two more of them but they're still in the same color black so i guess that's good we can print something quite large with all this black all right let's see what else we have okay so this looks like to be all the little hardware and some tools in here there looks like some aluminum extrusions here and they're actually not black more of the natural aluminum finish very nice so I'm starting to see a lot more pieces here. So it looks like we're gonna have some assembly to do. So that was the first layer. Let's go ahead and pop this foam out. Pretty nice thick foam here. Looks like we have the power adapter, aluminum bed. All right, so we get a really nice high quality little snippers here. And it looks like we also get a spatula and it's semi sharpened, so it could be useful. All right, so it looks like we have a few more parts here. Okay, so this is the hot end with looks like maybe the extruder also connected to it wow that's a really neat design there because they have a little silicone sock right over the tip there and also they have it around the heat block very cool this definitely looks more like a precision part here than a normal 3d printer very interesting so it looks like we have a plug here on top and i guess this is our extruder here feed the filament into that hole right there and there's the extruder motor and that's going to push it into the hot end very interesting quite excited to see how that works and by the way all this white you see here is uh 3d printed so but the piece down here that thing that's injected all right so let's keep going looks like we have another layer of foam to take out so the piece down here looks like it's all one piece and it kind of moves around so maybe i should just pull out the whole thing all right so that was everything in the box so yeah it looks like we have the base here that's uh, pre-assembled already I definitely love the look of this machine. It's quite different than what we're used to when we look at 3D printers. And it just looks interesting, the design and the way it's put together. All right, let's see if we can take this thing out. So there's like just like these wires going around and like, it's just quite unique looking. I guess there's a few pieces here. Let's take this one out first. All right, so this is our Z axis and then our X axis right here. So, okay, we'll just lay that down nicely. And down here, it looks like we have the base with the wiring here. Wow, this is quite a unique looking printer. So we have a on and off switch here with the light. So here we, on the other side, we have another on and off switch. That's kind of interesting. So we got one here and one here. Maybe they serve two different purposes. We'll find out. So this is where we'll connect our USB cable to the computer. And that's our power connector there. And from what I'm seeing so far, there is no LCD screen on this thing. So I think they want you to use your computer straight to this thing as I think how it works. So quite a unique looking printer and definitely some interesting stuff going on, kind of like this thing right here. I'm not sure what that is, but that looks very interesting for sure. So this is our X axis motor here. And this is, looks like where the plate will bolt onto. 
And if you guys notice so far, everything looks to be running on linear rails here. So speed and precision on our side in this design here. And if we look on the bottom, we can see the belt is right there. And it kind of travels around here. And it's got a little cover on this side, so we can't even see what's going on in there. But yeah, there's probably a little idler pulley in there. Very nice and clean design. Definitely loving the construction and the overall look of this thing. Let's check out the bottom right quick. So it looks like we have some rubber feet. Looks like a really nice piece of aluminum here. And there is a, a label here that kind of tells us some more information. It's a 19 volts, 6.32 amps. All right, so we got all our parts out and it's definitely an interesting looking printer and it's gonna take a little bit, I guess, of involvement here of putting it together, so. All right, so let's take a closer look at this manual and see if we can figure out how to put this printer together. All right, so on the first page, looks like we have all the things that are included. All right, so for step one, looks like they want us to connect over here, it looks like the Z-axis motor. I guess before we can do that, we need to cut all these wires loose. And of course, we're gonna use the provided little cutters here. And yeah, these things are very nice. All right, so let's cut all these pieces loose here. Uh, we should have some wiring. So there's a few wires coming out. And so the plug that plugs into the motor is actually the same color. If you guys notice, they're color coded. There's This is like yellow, yellow, and this is red, and then there's another one white. So there's not too many wires. And then we have like this main wire, I guess, for the hot end. All right, so let's go ahead and plug that in. All right, so that's step one. Okay, so step two is we need to connect the whole Z-axis here to the base. Now you will need a Phillips screwdriver, but let's go ahead and see what kind of tools and things that's included in this little packet here. So we do have quite a few things. Looks like even extra nozzles and stuff. And they look to be different diameters because this one's a 0.2 and that one's a 0.6. But you will need your own Phillips screwdriver, so just so you know. All right, so I got a Phillips screwdriver. So what we need to do now, there are three bolts right here that we need to take out. Quite loose where you can just do it by hand. And so what it appears is that we're gonna line it up right here. But where it's gonna go is actually on this side. So there's a little lip right here, and the lip is, I guess, facing this way. If you guys can see, I'm not sure. But in any case, so it goes somewhere in here. So we're gonna have to manage our little cables here because they seem to be somewhat in the way a little bit of this motor here. Anyways, once you line it up, go ahead and put our little bolts in. And there are three of them. And I'm guessing we're just gonna go ahead and snug it up really good. Okay, so I guess that appears to be good where it's at. All right, so for step three, we need to feed the wire with the red plug through this area right here. And this is the wire with the red plug. So I guess we're simply gonna go underneath the motor here and then insert it into this little holder here, just like that. All right, so for step four, it says connect the YZ end stop cable to the connector inside the cable holder. So there's a white cable that connects right here. And it's this one right here. And this cable here also can go underneath the motor to kind of keep everything tidy. And then we're just simply gonna plug it right here. This is the end stop wire for both the Y and the Z. All right, so, so far the cable management on this machine here is quite nice. So for step five, we need to connect the Y motor cable. So that was the red one, which is right here. And I guess that is a Y motor here but it kind of looks more like a an x for me but i guess y is what it is on this printer it goes just like that and by the way the z axis here doesn't really hold itself it just kind of falls down on its own so i'm not sure if that's normal I, i'm guessing it is it's just the weight of it it's pulling it down all right so this wire just kind of floats around at this point i'm not sure if that's normal i'm guessing yes let's see if we pick it up Okay, yeah, so it just kind of roams around here. All right, so for step six, they want us to grab the large cable and feed it, I guess, just kind of around here and up into this clamp here, I guess, to clamp it down. I guess that's about right, not sure. I guess we can adjust it if we need it later. But something like that. Get this larger wire here going up. All right, so for the next part, we're gonna install the hot end extruder assembly. And that should be quite simple. There's two holes right there, and then there's two bolts right here, and it'll just mount right there, just like that. So I guess we need to get the 
Allen wrench key for these little bolts. And that is in that baggie. So I think it's a good idea to start the bolt in the hole here first. And then kind of come up to it and tighten it in there. All right, so we started one. Well, hopefully you guys can see. I'm just realizing I might be a little too far away. So I'm going to try to get a little closer for you. But yeah, basically you can see right here. Right here are the ones that are closer to the hot end. Yeah, so I guess we're going to go ahead and tighten those really good. All right, that should be plenty right there. So yeah, this thing definitely now got a lot heavier. And so it really falls a lot quicker now. So step eight is quite easy. It's just plugging the plug right here on top of the hot end assembly. This big large wire here. And that simply just plugs right into here. Just like that. All right. And so for now, we're just going to put this aside. And it looks like we're going to be building some kind of frame piece here. Well, actually, it says it's a spool holder. So we're going to be building a little spool holder. And so they kind of want you to figure this out on your own. They don't there's no real like step by step direction, because after that, it looks like we go to the software that I guess controls the printer. So really, there wasn't much to do for the installation, but they didn't even tell us to install the bed here. So I'm guessing because it's, you know, too logical to not install it. So obviously that goes right there. And there looks to be like three or four little bolts there. I'll see in a second. But I'm kind of confused how you print on this thing. I mean, I guess you print straight to the metal. It is kind of like a got this really uh, rough texture to it. But how do you or I guess maybe you print right over the bolts. Is that how that works? In any case, well, let's just continue with our spool holder building. So I guess all the little parts to the spool holder are in here. There's like these angle brackets here. They just slide into the channel like that. And then when you put your bolt through there, it jams it in there. So and holds it. We also have this that was included, but I'm not sure what it's for because it's not in the manual. Some kind of little bracket here that's 3D printed with two bolts. Uh, maybe we'll figure it out as we go. All right, so this shouldn't be too hard. So we're going to start with a longer piece and then another longer piece. So what you want to do is you want to put two of these brackets just like that inside. And then we can slide this other long one into them, like just like that. So we're getting somewhere now. And they do include these little tiny little set screws and that's what actually goes into here not bolts but set screws that hold all this stuff together it's really interesting to me that they decided to go this route for the uh, spool holder i guess the reason i'm saying that is because it seems to be more complicated than it needs to be number one and number two it kind of seems like an overkill for a spool holder also well, maybe there's a reason for all this all right, so I got that tightened up and it feels pretty good. All right, so for the next part, we're gonna need to make a foot. So we're gonna slide one in. And the only reason we do only one because we still need another one for the top. And it's just a foot, so we don't really need too much strength here. So and we're just gonna line it up in the center there and put some set screws in it. All right, so just like that. But one thing I'm realizing is I think you're only supposed to have one bracket per connection. So I'm gonna need to take this one out. But in order for me to do that, I'll have to loosen both sides because one of these brackets, the L brackets, is used on the top as a little lip to hold the filament in. So yeah, this is definitely an interesting way of approaching a spool holder. All right, so we're getting somewhere. So we need another piece that goes like this. And so we're going to use this bracket for just that. So yeah, this is going to be flush on the top here. So yeah, it's going to take you longer to... <laughs> Put the spool holder together and then the whole printer all right and so for the last piece we're going to make a little lip on the very top here you know that's going to hold the spool from coming off and obviously you can adjust this in and out if you wanted to according to the spools you use i'm just going to make it flush for now and uh, we'll adjust it later if we need to all right and that is our spool holder now in that bag, there's also five of these little caps. And I think they are for the spool holder because these edges are actually quite sharp. And so they install quite easy. There's a little hole right here that just pops right in there. And now we have a little end cap here that kind of makes it look better and protects you from edges here. And it looks like you do kind of need to hit them because it works the best. Just pushing them for some reason doesn't work very well but just tapping it in works real good and that's it we have a built spool holder all right so let's bring the machine in here so i'm starting to kind of understand why the spool holder is like that and the reason is is because the aesthetics of it i guess so i guess you would hang your spool like this and then it'll feed 
or maybe it should go on the other side i'm not sure we'll figure that out but yeah i kind of see it now how they really look nice together the printer and the spool holder all right so i guess it's time to put this bed on what's kind of interesting to me is that there's three bolts here and that are kind of poking out and then one that's sunk in so i'm guessing it just holds on three bolts and i just leave that one alone so i guess that's what i'm gonna do all right so i don't think it matters too much well maybe it does it looks like they're longer this way okay so the longer goes like this so they're wide all right so let's pick this up set our bed over yep that's how it goes all right so this thing's probably gonna mess us up trying to fall all the time i'm gonna give it a little prop here i'm gonna line up the holes and i guess just put three bolts in it should be plenty i guess but that's kind of weird because then we we have a hole here so maybe i'm doing it wrong i don't know in any case there's no instructions so that's how i guess i'm gonna do it all right so we're gonna tighten these up reasonably well so our bed can feel really solid and it seems like it does so yeah now we have a little hole here and some bolts i can i can live with the idea of these bolts being there and you just print over them i guess it's fine but the hole there that doesn't make any sense i wonder if we need to cover it with something but in any case we'll just let it be the way it is so this design is a little strange because you know we keep falling here and our nozzle is going to be always on the bed i guess resting on the bed and maybe that's fine so in the baggie, we also had this piece here that looks like it connects to something maybe, but I'm not sure where that goes. So we're just gonna leave it out. We also have some random hardware just laying around, but the cool part is, is we do have two extra nozzles. That's pretty neat. And it looks like they go up pretty deep over here into somewhere or into the heat break there. So very interesting. All right, guys, so we got the printer together, and honestly, I'm kind of a loss right now <laughs> what to even do because this is so different than a normal printer. So just by moving it around back and forth, we're definitely low on this side and high on this side and it's touching the nozzle. But it seems to be consistent everywhere, so the whole, I guess this arm needs to kind of go up just a tiny bit maybe. Anyways, I'm not sure how to level this thing. Another kind of a strange part that, you know, I'm not used to is that there is no micro SD card or any kind of memory here that we can read and there's no displays. So I guess the only way to use this thing is to actually download the software and then connect the printer to it and then hopefully we can figure things out. All right, so I had to move the printer to my desk because there's no way to get this thing powered on until we connect it to the computer here. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to a website called cetus3d.com. And so this is what it looks like. And then you're going to click on software right here. And what you're going to want to download is the UpStudio 3D software. And in the compatibility chart, you can see the Mac version if that's what you're using. If you're using Windows, I have some drivers here. So I clicked on Mac OS and then it took me like to the app store to download the actual program it looks like this right here up studio and so when we click that this is what we see but what we need is the little icon right here now you can sign up to it and stuff i haven't done that yet so if you click on up right here it goes straight to the slicing software and this is where we're going to control our printer so i got the power cord connected so i'm going to connect the usb cable and let's go ahead and hit the power button so it looks like we have a little light here that's glowing red. See some green back there. And yeah, it's not really doing anything. But over here on the computer, we can see it says, please activate the printer to use all functions. So I guess we're gonna click okay on that. So it asks us to log in. So if you wanna sign up, you can do it. If you don't, you just go back to the up button here on the side. So at the moment, the printer is not connected. It's just idling. And if we look on the top over here, it says printer not initialized. And so what we need to do is you can see this little button way over here to the side. If you click that, it should initiate the printer because the program knows that something was connected. So what we need to do is initialize it. And this is what this button does. And we can see, so it's starting to beep. And there it goes, it's doing something. So I'm guessing this is kind of like just homing is what it's doing because we got an end stop switch over there on the top that it's clicking there it goes and then we got another one on the bed and then the x-axis there so so our light turned to blue now and that looks like it is ready is what it looks like to me and sure enough we have more information here on the top that says you know the temperature of the hot end there, the bed, I guess that's what it is. And the material that we're using is PLA and printer ready. 
And I guess this is the name of our printer, that number right there. All right, well that was an actual and really easy setup. So this is basically the slicer and here's your hot buttons here on the top. So this is where we can add a model. This is where we're gonna print. This is to initialize the printer, calibrate, and maintenance. So let's go ahead and try to add a file here. So it looks like we have a few choices. We could add a 3D model, we can add a 2D picture. So it actually can do something with a picture maybe, look at that. And we have basic shapes here that you can add also. All to place. Okay, let's just go ahead and import a regular 3D model. And let's go ahead and go with the benchy here that I have. And there we go, so it just appears. And the arrow here in the front shows us where the front of the printer is. All right, looks like we can move it around and zoom in and zoom out. So all the controls that we have to manipulate the model here are over here on the side on the scroll wheel. So here we have rotate. If we click that, we can rotate it. And it shows us exactly how much we're rotating it. And then you get hot buttons here also for the rotation. So this is view, you can change the view, how you look at the bed. You can look at the uh, model itself in a different form. So let's try this wireframe style. And there you can see changes to that. This is solid frame transparent so yeah this thing has a lot of options so what is this okay, so this is a different kind of view here it, like cuts it out completely oh it cuts it in half look at that it kind of shows you all the uh, parts there this is a quite a unique slicer here it seems to be more of a higher end slicer turn that off so this is out of place flip so we can flip it around undo more so here we have the scale the movement and the rotation so I guess I kind of went backwards. as you can see we have all the basic functions and plus a little bit more so let's go ahead and move this benchy and when we click the move we can see little arrows pop up and I don't know if you guys can see on this video but you can see there's little round holes right here or these outlines and these are the bolts on the bed so you can move your benchy or your model around to avoid those bolts if you wanted to I guess well we might go back just a little more all right, so let's just leave it right there. So when you're ready, the slicer bench and printed, we're gonna go over here and click on the print. And here we have some basic settings we can change. So we have the layer thickness. We can go anywhere from 0.1 to 0.35 looks like. And it doesn't look like I can change that incrementally here. So these are just hot buttons. So here we have infill, no infill, no infill top and bottom, 13%, 15%, 20, 65, 80, and 99 so usually 20 percent works good for everything so i'm just going to leave it on 20 for the bench quality normal fine fast um i guess we'll leave normal for now nozzle offset so this is where we can offset the nozzle i guess from the bed when it first begins not going to do anything there so here we have some options we have unsolid model so if this is if you want infill i'm thinking you need to check this because if you uncheck it it'll make a solid model no raft so if you don't want a raft you can check this and it'll print straight to the bed but i think we need to leave the raft and no support so yeah we definitely don't want supports on the bench here all right so then we have a few options we can either print here actually we have advanced print also and then we have preview so let's go ahead and preview see what happens so it's slicing it it says and there we go, we got some kind of preview there. So down here we can see we can scroll through our layers. We got 328 layers. So if I sc scroll it, we can see what it's going to be printing. All right, and so we can do a few things. We can, we can save the file. We can add a pause layer. I guess that's what that is, I'm not sure. We can print here and exit the preview. So let's go ahead and exit. Now we can't really do anything right now because we don't even have the filament inserted or we haven't even checked if the bed was level enough to go ahead and start printing. But according to what I saw earlier moving it around, it looked pretty good. It was a little bit low on one side and a little bit high on the other. But so where we need to go is to this calibration mode here click that we can see it pulls up our bed here and all the calibrated numbers just kind of interesting that it's already somewhat calibrated in some spots I guess here we can have manual auto level or reset and then the manual setting is 183 well, let's go ahead and click on this manual button see what happens so it's going to that first point on the bed so I guess this is manually to level the bed and we can do that with a sheet of paper and then for some reason it stopped a lot higher than the bed there that's kind of odd in a way i guess they want you to start up high and go down so let's just cancel this process for now let's try the auto leveling see what that does so that says please touch switch okay now we got an arrow so i guess we didn't do it fast enough please touch switch so i guess they mean maybe this switch here up front all right so it's 
activated something. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. Because over here, I'll, we got an error again for the auto leveling, so I'm not sure exactly what it's doing. All right, so it's not really doing anything. And on the top here, we have motion system error. So I guess we need to initialize it. All right, so we're back to printer ready over there. All right, so I'm just gonna leave the bed leveling alone for now. Well, let's click on this maintenance button and see what this is all about here. Okay, so this is where we can, uh, looks like load and unload our filament. Choose our printing board. Looks like we have the coated build plate, the nozzle size, the heat for 15 minutes. Not sure what that means. And then the material PLA. So I guess the important part here is we can go ahead and extrude some filament and maybe we can go ahead and get some filament in the machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and push that. All right, so it's doing something. So it started heating the nozzle. It's heating up quite quick. And this light here in the front started blinking red and blue back and forth. So I guess it's preheating. And so actually we haven't installed this little tube here and in the manual farther down, I saw a picture right here and under load filament of where this tube goes. And it simply just goes on top here and then goes to the back in here. So our filament will feed in here through the tube and into the hot end. Well, I guess into the extruder here that will push it into the hot end. All right, so I'm just gonna grab some of this filament that came with the printer and we're gonna print our first benchy with it so it looks like I waited too long and I needed to restart the filament extruder I don't really like rolls like this because it's get all tangled and it's quite annoying it's not a good way to start your first print but in any case all right so I'm just gonna push the filament up this tube here all right so now it's coming out the other side here and I think is the best way is to take it out and so we can push it through okay so yeah you did grab it all right so it should be coming out Sorry for my camera work, guys. Okay, here we go. All right, so yeah, this is how you can purge it. And there goes our black. So I'm just gonna go ahead and print and see what happens. And hopefully our bed is close enough. Since we're printing a raft, we should be okay. So let's go ahead and click on the print here. So I think everything stayed the same like we had it. So we're gonna click on print again here. All right, so it's slicing. And now it looks like it's sending it to the printer. And we do have another option here that popped up that says stop. So right now it's completely printing through the cable from the computer to the printer. So the printer is receiving the information right now. So we did have a pop up here that says one hour and 38 minutes, 16 grams. I guess we should okay that. So nothing's happening yet because I think it's preheating. We can see the temperature going up on the hot end. All right, so it made a noise. I think it's almost ready. All right, there it goes. A moment of truth here. We're going to print our first benchy. All right, so it's not scraping the bed, and it looks like it's a good distance away. And it's building a raft. And it's quite thick, actually, so... Yeah, it looks like we're going to be all right. I had a feeling they probably pre-leveled this thing or had it really close. All right, so we're actually printing. So on the slicer here, we can see some of the parameters here. We have the a hot in here it is 98 or 96% hot to the temperature. It was set, doesn't even say the temperature. Then we have PLA here. And here's the important part, the time left and the layer it's on. Fifth layer, and then we got one hour and 37 minutes. So that's actually much quicker than normally my Benchy's printing. So this thing's gonna definitely boogie it along and cut the time in half. And we are printing at 0.15, so that is quite higher detail. All right, so I'm just going to let this thing print, and uh, we'll check up on it here in a little bit. All right, so this thing's boogieing along, and looks like it's turning out really, really nice. It's kind of hard to tell, but so far what I can see, it looks quite detailed. And there doesn't appear to be any kind of layering that I can tell, so... So yeah, this thing looks really promising. I was a little nervous at first about this bed, but I'm feeling a little better now. I mean, if it builds a raft, it seems like it's fine. We'll see how easy that raft comes off. All right, so I'm just gonna let it finish and then we'll see what the Benchy turns out to be like. All right, so the Benchy is done and that was actually very quick. So I'm actually really curious how this will come off the bed. All right, so it just popped off and we can see the raft here. But just the initial look here, the Benchy is looking really good. Now there is some ringing in the print. And that might have something to do with this huge GoPro setup I got over here. It's probably adding quite a bit of weight to this plate. I think without it, it would be ultra light. So, cause this thing is very light weight. So let's go ahead and try to pull the raft off. See how hard that is. All right, so it's not easy, but it does feel like it's coming off. 
Definitely not coming off as easy as I wanted it to. It seems like it's fused too good. I'm gonna have to use these little snippers here. So now that the raft is removed, it's looking pretty good, but I took a nice chunk out of the uh, benchy right here, looks like. The quality on the finish is very impressive. I don't know, but I would have to say probably one of the best for sure. It looks solid and feels solid, and the layer bonding is amazing. There is a tiny bit of ringy, but it's very minimal. I don't know, so far this is quite amazing, and if it can continue to print like this, I think we got something pretty awesome here on our hands. And let's not forget that we printed this about half the time if I would normally print on a regular printer. All right, so I know this printer has wireless capabilities, or at least I think so. So, so let's go back to the slicer here and see if we can find how we can access that stuff. So over here on the top right corner, we have some options. We have my account, settings, skin and feedback so i guess skin is the way this slicer looks like and then settings i think is what we need all right so here we go actually i think we need to click on printer and then we have to click on this little icon right here and here it gives us the wireless connection options so we're going to look for a network here and here's mine now we got to put in the password to the network and then confirm all right we should be able to connect all right so let's click confirm on the bottom all right, so let's do a test. I'm gonna power it off, and then let's disconnect this cable here. So everything seems to be disconnected now. So let's go ahead and power the printer back on. So what we're gonna do after that is we're gonna go to this area right here where it shows our printer number, and we're gonna click on Add Printer. And then when we click that, we can see our Wi-Fi printer comes up here and with the name and that same number. So essentially what we're doing is we're making another connection, like adding another printer because of the Wi-Fi. So we're gonna add that by pushing this little plus. And now it appears over here. So we're gonna close this. Then we're gonna open this window up here again and choose this printer with the Wi-Fi. So now we're gonna push OK, go back to up and initialize it. And if you can see guys, it's wirelessly uh, connected now to the printer. So now we can have the printer anywhere in the house and be able to control it here from our computer. And that is a great feature. All right, so we're back at the filming area and as you can see guys, I got the printer to print wirelessly so that's pretty awesome now that we can have the printer anywhere in the range of the Wi-Fi and it will receive prints and commands. So what I'm printing right now is one of those little test cubes with the XYZ. And what I want to do is I want to print three of them. One of them is the 0.4 nozzle, which is printing right now. And then I want to do a 0.2 nozzle and a 0.6 nozzle and we can see the difference in the prints. So it says it's only going to take about 26 minutes to do a 0.4 and changing the nozzle doesn't appear to be too hard because we do have this tool that's included with the uh, kit here and it simply just goes over the nozzle just like that and then you can unscrew it from the heat block. So once this print is finished, I'm gonna go ahead and change the nozzle to a 0.2 and we'll print a much finer cube. All right, so I've finished the first cube. Let's see if we can get this raft off. All right, well this time the raft came off real easy. Much easier than that benchy we had to take off. So yeah, this is a 0.4 nozzle, 0.15 layer height. So the print looks very good. So we're looking at black, so this is very revealing here. There is some vibrations or ghosting whatever you want to call it you can kind of see maybe the X just continues going like a ghost but overall very very solid print like like it's precise and even our bottom here with the raft actually turned out really well all right so it's preheating in order to extract which I think it's doing now okay yeah it's coming out okay so now we can go ahead this nozzle off so it looks like it's normal thread, so I have to be careful here. All right, well that actually was pretty loose already, maybe because it's hot. And it's coming out quite easy. And there it is. So that is our point four nozzle. And we're gonna replace it with a point two. It doesn't seem like we need to make it very tight, just a little bit, that should be fine. 
All right, so I'm gonna go and extrude this, and then start the next cube, which will be a lot finer. All right, so our print is starting. Pretty excited to see what a 0.2 millimeter nozzle will print. This is actually, I think, my first time ever using a nozzle that tiny. So it looks like our spacing is still good with this nozzle also. Uh, that's nice to know the consistency is there. All right, so there doesn't appear to be any kind of issues. So this one, I had to slice 0.1 millimeters because if I do 0.05, it's gonna take like almost three hours. This is gonna take almost an hour. I think it was like 56 minutes or 57. So much better and uh, yeah, more competitive with the first print. So yeah, just keep that in mind that it's a 0.1 millimeters, which is half exactly of the 0.2 hole on the nozzle, which is, you know, perfect kind of combination so all right so our 0.2 millimeter cube here is done and it is a little bit harder to get off the bed looks like but it still pops off it does look a bit better but it does still have ghosting and you can kind of tell there but everything is definitely more fine and looks a little bit better for sure and it looks like our raft just comes off really easy on this one we're gonna take a closer look at these cubes. I'm gonna go ahead and change the nozzle to the 0.6 and print that cube. And then I'm gonna print a few other things. And uh, yeah, then we'll look at all the models. All right, so I printed quite a few things here, as you can see, and some of them are quite large, like this birdhouse over here. Let's go ahead and go back to the cubes, which are actually in this box that I printed also. And this thing turned out phenomenal. So I used the 0.4 nozzle for this one at 0.2 layer height and as you can see guys it turned out great and it is a functional box that opens up and it was actually printed open like this with the lid beside it so you can see how it had to print the lid all the way up until it connected all over here so nothing failed and it completed and inside the box we have quite a few things which we'll take a look at in a second but if you look at this box I mean this thing turned out really good and the hinging and everything it just worked perfect and look at this mesh here I mean that's great and so even the bottom looks awesome and this was actually on a raft the raft pulled off really easy off of this one so I noticed using the raft actually works great with this printer most of the time and so this box really shows that this printer is just good at everything and that's the theme that it's been giving me this whole time as I've been printing is that no matter what I print it just prints it and does very well all right so right here I have the three calibration cubes so we got a 0.2 nozzle 0.1 millimeter layer height and then we got a 0.4 nozzle in the middle here 0.15 millimeter height and then we have a 0.6 nozzle here at the end that we printed at 0.3 and that's the lowest that lets us go in the software and hopefully you guys can see the difference between the three but we can see that the 0.2 nozzle is definitely much finer and much more detailed there is ringing on all of them but it's less apparent on the 0.6 because it's just more rough. The tops all look great, but the 0.2 millimeter nozzle obviously looks the best, the cleanest. And here we are looking at a smooth surface. So they all look pretty good, but the 0.2 obviously looks the best. And the 0.6 is not as good, but still pretty good. But the 0.4 seems to be very well rounded, no matter how you look at it. So if you need the balance, the 0.4 nozzle is still the best choice. If you want the finest detail, obviously the 0.2. And if you need to print something quick and still have really good quality, the 0.6 here does not disappoint. And so these are the test cubes that we printed. And as you can see guys, this printer is very good at that fine detail. So let's go ahead and look at some benchies here. So this benchy was printed with a 0.4 nozzle, 0.15 millimeter height. So it's pretty fine overall. And you can see it has a really good structure. And on the black here, we can really see how the layers are sitting. And so on the flatter, smoother surfaces, we can see we do have some a ringing or ghosting. It's not terrible, but it is there. But as far as the print is concerned, it's, it's very good. Very high quality and precise the way the layers are sitting. And you can really tell by the sides. So, so same benchy, just in red. And layer height is 0.2 now instead of 0.15. And we can see this one turned out just as well. There is something a little bit funny here on the bottom, but I think the edge lifted here, which seems to happen with these benchies. Yeah, overall a great print. And here in the red color, you can really see, you know, how great it looks. So I also did a red calibration cube just for the heck of it. This is a 0.4 nozzle with 
0.2 layer height. It looks pretty good overall. You guys can see here on the wall, it's nice how the layers are sitting even at the 0.2 layer height. So after that, I wanted to print something a little bit more in the precision area, which is this bearing here. And this is a really cool little design. And I did print this with a raft and the raft popped off and this did need a little bit of encouraging to pop it loose, but it popped loose right away and it works just fine. And as you guys can see, it spins, no issues. So yeah, it's pretty cool what the uh, community is designed these days for these 3D printers. It's quite unique. And this is a great piece here. So 0.4 nozzle, 0.15 layer height. So, so then I printed out this infinity cube and you can really tell, you know, the angles and how it handles curves and things like that. So, and in this gold filament here, especially it really shows, but it does print like this and it goes up. So there is room for errors here and there and moving around because this thing does flex quite a bit back and forth. Even with this sharp angles here, it did a really good job. I mean, it's not perfect, especially here in some of the stitching areas. And you can really tell on this gold because it shines. But overall, it did amazingly well. And this is definitely quite a unique piece here also. So yeah, guys, no matter what I throw at this printer, it just printed it. I didn't really have to mess with anything, which is cool. And once I got it wirelessly working, I just send it to the printer and then just did it which makes it really fun to use. For the next piece I printed is this Matter Hacker Space Guy looking thing. And the reason I wanted to print this is because it has a lot of smooth surfaces and I really wanted to see how they would finish. And as you guys can see, it did an excellent job on this little Space Guy here. And so it made me realize that this printer is just good at everything. I mean, there's just nothing this printer can't do, seems like. And so you guys can see the layer bonding even at these reasonably steep angles here is very good. So this piece came out excellent and I did print it on a raft, which I still haven't popped off yet. So you guys can kind of see what that turns out like. The way it makes the raft is really interesting because it puts thicker layers down and then it puts really fine layers. And so whenever you go to pull it off, it just kind of flexes off. So they really got it down with the raft and how it holds the model. So, and so after printing all these smaller items, I was wondering, could this thing print something more serious? I mean, it does have a very reasonable bed size of 180 square. So at first I was thinking to print some big vase or something, but then I found this, that this is a birdhouse and it's huge. So this covered 90 plus percent of that bed, maybe like 95, basically almost to the limits. And you guys can see, I didn't even use a raft. I went straight on the bed and it turned out great. I did have a couple corners kind of start to creep up, but that's kind of understandable how large this piece is. It wasn't significantly enough to warp it. And there's a lot of filament that went into this. It was, I think, 650 something grams. So it was a huge print. And if you guys can tell by the reflections on the walls there, this is an excellent print. And I printed this with the 0.6 nozzle at 0.3 millimeter layer height. And it only took 12 hours to print this huge piece. And it's heavy. I mean, we're talking about 650 grams here. So that's like over a pound of material just in this birdhouse. And the reason I wanted to print a birdhouse instead of something else is because I can actually hang this in the backyard and I'm kind of curious if the birds will use it. So you could use this as a feed, you know, put some stuff in there for them, or you can just leave it alone and let them build their nests in there. And it does have little holes there on the bottom. So if any water did get through here or into there, it'll drain out. So a great little design of a little birdhouse. And it does have this nice little hook where you can run a little rope through there and hang it. And that's exactly what I'm going to do with this thing. So overall, guys, I'm actually really, really impressed with this printer. At first, I was a little confused and a little disorientated because, you know, it's quite different than what we're used to with, you know, having screens and heated beds like this one doesn't have. But I have to say, I did not have any failed prints because of no heated beds or I didn't have a problem really controlling the printer because I don't have an LCD screen or even any kind of functions. Everything running through the computer and then wirelessly actually makes it painless and actually a little bit more fun. So I did figure out what this little switch does here and basically that overrides anything that's going on here and kind of homes it 
up and holds it in the home position so i guess that's what that does and one of the best things about this printer is that it gets the print done really fast like none of these prints took that long like this one was the longest one by far but that was 12 hours and obviously i did use the 0.6 nozzle but you know in another printer that would be at least double the time i mean that's a guaranteed so this thing's really optimized with its software really put out the prints really quick and it does an amazing job quality wise and it really eliminates the hassle of trying to tune a machine because it really is already comes tuned <laughs> software and hardware wise here to just work and i think this is the part that's quite attractive about this printer is that it's a great desktop computer of a 3d printer the only part that i found a little bit annoying is loading and unloading the filament because every time you load it or unload it you have to go in the program and do that and there's no mechanical spring here or anything the driver here on the extruder and the gearing is kind of all automated somewhat you just stick it in there and it grabs it and you have to use the software to do that so it's a little bit of back and forth when changing the filament but i've learned to use it when the print is done you retract the filament after that right away and it's no big deal you get set up for your next print change your filament and then go back to the software click extrude and then it'll purge it and by the time you slice your model and start it it'll be ready to go so it's not that big of a deal just something a little different than we're used to so actually guys there is one more thing i forgot about that i printed which is this bolt here with this headphone holder so the bolt was printed straight to the bed and you guys can see the finish on that it's got this nice little texture finish it was printed with a 0.4 nozzle 0.2 layer height and it turned out great and then this thing was printed with a 0.6 nozzle at a 0.3 layer height and it turned out really good also and this was a really fast print i think this only took like three hours or something like that so i was quite amazed how quick it put out this huge print here and they feel really solid this printer just does good at everything i wanted to mix it up and printed a red bolt for this gray bracket and all this is is just a headphone holder you just attach it to any kind of table or desk so yeah guys overall i really can see why this printer is popular and why it's so well loved is because it does the things that are important very well which is print quality speed ease of use there's no tinkering around with settings trying to figure out how to tune it up whatever and then the space that it takes is very minimal so you could have it on your desk and when you want to print something it's a really quick setup and a really quick print so so i have to say after printing with this thing i'm actually really really enjoying it and i think this will be the printer that i put near myself that whenever i need to print out anything i will send it to here because i know it's going to be fast high quality and i don't have to mess with sd cards or wires i just wirelessly send it to here and it'll print it for me so yeah if you're new to 3d printing this is a, an amazing machine to start with now it is a little bit on the pricier side and there's a reason for that it's because it's a complete package of what it has to offer not a lot of printers can give you this so i definitely would recommend this for beginners and even if you've been into 3d printing you will not be disappointed with this thing you will find the workflow of this thing is quite seamless so yeah guys huge thumbs up for this printer it takes a lot of the boxes it makes printing easy and fun so if you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful then hit that like button and if you want to pick up the mk3 for yourself i'll have some links in the description so check those out and if you enjoy videos like this i do a lot of 3d printing on this channel and there's a lot more to come so hit that subscribe button if you want to see more and i want to say thank you to everyone that supports this channel and watches to the end thumbs up for you and as always guys thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next one Peace.